recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the real test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a conversation about homestay registration between a student and an accommodation advisor. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion, only the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to apply for a homestay. Right. Sit down, please. Well, I need to take down your details first. The type of accommodation that the student hopes to apply for is homestay. So, homestay has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the question as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to apply for a homestay. Right. Sit down, please. Well, I need to take down your details first. OK. What's your full name? My name is Aaron Lee. Do you spell your first name A-A-R-O-N? Yes. OK. And your age? I'm 18 years old. So you are a freshman in our university? Yes. What's your present address? I live in student accommodation, International House. In which area? North Campus. Your room number? It is 316C. OK, Aaron. Are you unsatisfied with your flat now? Actually, my flat is all right, but I hope to move into a local family, to have more opportunities to know about local culture and to improve my English. Right. Tell me your contact number. My home number is 81419680 and my mobile phone is 75863344. Four, four. Now, look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. Well, Aaron, can you tell me your requirements about homestay, such as food or facilities, something like that? Yes. Firstly, I prefer to live in a homestay house with a nice landlady and I hope she would be good at cooking. All right. How about others? And I'd like to have my own bathroom and balcony. I don't want to share with others. OK, no problem. Anything else? Oh, yeah. You know, one of my friends, Chris, who lives in a family with three young children... Yeah? They are too noisy, and my friend cannot study. So I hope there are no young children in my homestay house. OK, fine. Do you need a garage? 
I don't drive now, and maybe I would need it in the future. Oh, yes, I hope that the house would be near to campus. OK, a y not far from campus. Anything else? No. Well, let's talk about the rent and the deposit. OK. Usually, the rent of homestay is about £140 per week, and you will have to pay two weeks' rent as a deposit in advance. Does the rent include all bills? No. It only includes the water fee. You have to pay your electric bill and telephone bill and cable bill if you need. Right. When would you like to move in? As soon as possible. Well, I hope to see a house this weekend. How about this Saturday? Is it the 6th of October? Right. OK, a y I know. Do you have any other questions? No, that's all. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. This is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a lecture about a famous natural resort in England. First, you will have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Welcome, everybody, to the Guide for the Peak District. Situated in the heart of England and covering parts of six counties, the Peak District is a place of outstanding natural beauty. It is just five miles from the Sheffield city centre. A short break or longer holiday will allow you to explore some of England's most spectacular scenery. And in the towns, villages, and hamlets, among the prettiest in the country, you will find a warm and genuine welcome wherever you go. Every taste is catered for, and many exciting activities are available. Here are some highlights of the most popular places to visit. For the most active people, the following areas offer you. Excellent opportunities for walking, strolling, rock climbing, caving, cycling, and hang gliding. The first place I'd like to introduce you to is Bakewell. This beautiful little town is renowned for a certain local delicacy the famous Bakewell pudding. It's very delicious. And steeped in history, Bakewell's oldest building dates back to Henry VIII's reign. Just south of the town is the medieval Haddon Hall, a magnificent Tudor manor house complete with gardens, heralded as the most romantic in England. On Sheffield's doorstep lies the Palace of the Peak. Chatsworth. Is quite possibly the UK's most stunning country house and a must see for any visitor. The magnificent ground alone, with their formal gardens, fountains, and maze, are worth a visit. At the heart of the Peak District lies the Peak District National Park, the first of Britain's national parks, established in 1951. 
to safeguard and preserve this beautiful region, not only for future generations, but also for visitors to enjoy in the present. Whether you're exploring, getting out in the great outdoors, or simply relaxing, experience the Peak District and the Peak District National Park. You will be taking home wonderful memories. A regular train service from Sheffield travels through the scenic Hope Valley, home to the charming villages of Hathersage, Edhill, and Castleton. Hathersage is the final resting place of Little John, while Edhill marks the official start of the Pennine Way. Castleton has some of the greatest show caverns in Europe, and the only surviving Norman Keep in Derbyshire. The most famous cavern is Blue John Cavern. The natural water-worn caverns are home to eight of the fourteen known varieties of stunning Blue John Stone, which can be seen in its natural state among stalactites and stalagmites. Now. Look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 16 to 20. Further south, the craggly gritstone edges and limestone valleys of the Derbyshire Dales offer endless opportunities for walking and cycling. Please be aware that all children must be accompanied by an adult. There, many charming villages and larger market towns are famous for specialist shops offering everything from handmade chocolates and ceramics to antiques, designer clothing and equipment to tackle the great outdoors. You could pick up some wonderful souvenirs for your friends. Perhaps the most magnificent and certainly the best known stately home in England, Chatsworth is home to a private art collection which represents 4,000 years of European culture and craftsmanship from ancient Greece to modern works by British artists. Everything about Chatsworth is on an impressive scale. From the sumptuous interiors to the breathtaking gardens and the 1,000 acre capability brown designed estate is one of the most beautiful and historic man-made landscapes in Britain. The last resort I hope to recommend you is the beautiful village of Ayam, where there is a tragic tale. In 1665, a tailor in this small village received some cloth ridden with infected fleas from London. The village decided to quarantine itself but a third of the villagers died. That is known as the famous Plague Village. There are several reminders of this dramatic event, and A.M. Hall tells a vivid story of those fearful months. A.M. Hall is a small but charming 17th century manor house with a cafe and craft workshops in the centre of A.M. It has been over 50 years since Britain's first national park was established in 1951. Every year, lots of visitors from all over the world come here to relax and enjoy the natural beauty. So if you feel tired, bored about your work, study, or even the city life, why not visit the Peak District? You will find what you need there. This is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section three. Section three. In this section, you will hear a talk between a student and a professor. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 23. Good afternoon, Professor George. Good afternoon, Harper. Let's talk about your essay draft, OK? Yes. Actually, Professor George, I, I just decided to change my essay topic to energy crisis. Oh. I don't think you need to change the topic. You know, environmental protection is much better than that one. Oh, really? I'm glad to hear that. In your mind, that's a good work? Yes, I think so, but there is still lots of work that needs to be done. Oh, yes, of course. I'm just very anxious to hear what you think of it. Well, the first one. Which research methods will you take? I'd like to use a questionnaire. I don't think that's a good choice. Why? Because you will have lots of research data to check. That will be a huge work. Yeah, I think you're right. How about an interview? OK, I will think about it. Professor George, I think I have a problem with the timetable. You mean the deadline? Yes. I'm afraid I can't hand in my work before the essay deadline. Why? You know, I have to spend a lot of time on my part-time job. Harper, I don't think you've given me a good reason. You know, I can't postpone your deadline, except if you get an illness. But, Professor George, I... This is our rule. I hope you can cope well with your timetable, OK? OK. Now look at questions 24 to 30. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions 24 to 30. Harper, generally speaking, your essay is good work, but I'm worried about some parts. Yes, could you give me some suggestions about my work? Well, let's start with the purpose. I think it is not bad. You represent your idea and the reason for this work, but... What should I do? It's better for you to make them clearly. I mean to strengthen them. OK. The purpose needs to be stronger. Oh, and what's your opinion about the structure? I think your structure is very clear. I do really say, well done and go ahead. Thanks very much. I'm so glad to hear that. That's OK. How about other problems with my essay? How do you think your personal experiences as a background affects your work? Oh, it is just my question. I'm not sure whether I should write them. I can see why you put it here, but it really isn't relevant to your arguments. My advice on this is that you take them out. I think you're right. Anything else? No, just go ahead. Yes, how about other requirements, such as format or something like that? Well, let me see. Oh, yes. Your way of handing it in. I heard we must send our essays to you by email. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Before your deadline, let me check, it is 
Oh, here. It is on Friday, the 30th of October. Right. I will hand in my essay on time. Good. And you have to print your work by laser printer. Why? We will store all of our students' work, so good quality is very important. OK. Oh, Professor George, should I do the proofreading before handing in my essay? Yes, proofreading is necessary. You should check your grammar or spelling or format before handing in your work. OK. And your references. You must make your references clearly, and that's very important. OK, I know. Thanks very much for your help, Professor George. A pleasure. How about your presentation? This is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a lecture about British media. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. The United Kingdom has one of the world's oldest established newspaper industries. In the late 18th and early 19th century, as the British economy began to industrialize, as literacy levels rose through the introduction of mass education, more and more newspapers began to appear. The Times, which first appeared in 1785, is the United Kingdom's oldest daily newspaper, while The Observer, which is still published every Sunday, began publishing in 1791, making it the world's oldest national newspaper. The different main British newspapers, The Times, The Observer, The Guardian, still suggest that the function of the paper is to offer the electorate objective reports about what is happening in the country. The function of supervising the government is one of the reasons why a free press is considered so important to the functioning of parliamentary democracy. Besides politicians, businessmen paid more attention to the power of the press. They used press to push their products and services to potential customers. So, the advertising business was born. In Britain, most advertising is carried in newspapers. Companies use the press to sell products. People use the press to look for a job or to buy a house. All the British media must follow advertising codes, which ensure that advertisements are legal, honest and truthful. Have a sense of responsibility for consumer and society and respect the principles of fair competition. British newspaper culture is unusual in the extent to which class and educational differences are reflected in the newspapers people read. In other developed countries like Japan and the United States, newspaper reading is a habit of mainly middle class. However, in Britain, the lower classes are also regular readers. There are more than 1,500 different newspapers which cater for a wide range of political to educational views. Britain has one of the highest levels of newspaper sales per head of population in the world. 
Although most newspapers are financially independent of political parties, they also express some political views. The Quality Press not only publishes most serious and in-depth articles of particular political and social issues, but also expresses reviews about high culture for readers with well-educated and within the middle class. The most left-wing of these newspapers is The Guardian. You will often hear people on TV or in daily life refer to Guardian readers. This is a kind of shorthand to suggest someone who is left-wing and liberal in their politics and interested in society and social issues, such as will be soft on crime or quite feminist and interested in green politics. The other category of national newspapers is the tabloids, which people usually call the gutter press. It often carries some scandals about famous people, whether in politics, entertainment, or sport, etc. The stories are short, easy to read, and usually rely more on opinion than fact. One feature of the tabloid press, which has become a national institution, is the Page 3 Girl. A picture each day of pretty, scantily clad young women. The broadcast media, television and radio, are tremendously important to British national life. According to record, British people spend four to five hours a day watching TV. Whether you are working, chatting with friends or family, conversations will usually be about programs that were watched the evening before. Even newspapers also carry reviews of programs which are being broadcast. If a person does not participate in television viewing, he or she usually is looked as out. News, entertainment and sport are British people favourites. However, drama, comedy and game programs fall in and out of favour. British has two long-running soap operas. The oldest and most popular soap show was located in the northern city of Manchester in the 1960s. Compared with American soap operas, British soaps present gritty and realistic accounts of the everyday life of Britons. They are of very high quality and are popular abroad, whether in New Zealand or Canada. You can keep up with your favourite characters. Daily news and weather forecasts are also popular viewing. British newscasts are famous for the quality of their reporting. While there are many channels for audiences, so an interesting phenomenon appears. During particularly popular programs, the national utility companies have to make special preparations because during commercial breaks, a surge of demand for electricity is created when millions of British viewers rush out of the sitting room to make a cup of tea. The British Broadcasting Corporation, more familiarly known as the BBC or even the Beep, is Britain's main public service broadcaster. It began in 1927 as a public service radio station and later moved into TV. The BBC has two channels. BBC One specializes in shows with broad appeal, such as sport, entertainment, drama, kids shows and current affairs. BBC Two caters for special interest audiences and so broadcasts documentaries and shows aimed at particular social groups, such as the elderly, handicapped, homosexuals and so on. The BBC is funded by license fees and viewers must buy a license each year for their TV set. The BBC is no longer just about TV shows. Nowadays it is a multimedia business with wide publishing and educational interests. This is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.